Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Mathematics Instruction and Teaching Strategies. I am your narrator, Frank Avella. Here we are going to cover a number of different topics including the development of basic skills and classroom teaching strategies. Now we are going to begin this presentation with a broad overview of mathematics instructions. The research has shown the effectiveness of early start programs. Young students are better prepared and have improved opportunities for success when learning mathematics at an early age. Research also demonstrates the significance of the classroom teacher on the success of the child. Ineffective classroom teachers can seriously hinder a child's academic growth in mathematics. Explicit systematic instruction is considered to be one of the most effective methods of teaching mathematics. Teachers model skills, guide students on that skill, and check for understanding. Teachers should emphasize math's priority standards. Priority standards are your must-know standards needed for mastery to advance to the next grade level. On to the next topic, which is the various assessments for mathematics instruction. Assessment of student performance is absolutely necessary for instruction, just as is providing feedback. Due to the number of different skills in a given mathematics curriculum, it is essential for classroom teachers to frequently check for understanding CFU to ensure they aren't moving too fast and that students aren't falling behind. RTI response to intervention and intervention and referral services are necessary to identify students at most risk. These are tiered interventions. Diagnostic testing is recommended early on in the year. Teachers can use diagnostic testing to unit plan and target specific areas in need for groups of students. Many schools implement systems of student tracking, which occur throughout consecutive grade levels and years on end. Standardized tests are an important measure in student tracking. In the classroom, the Criterion Reference Test CRT, is often used to measure the degree to which a student has mastered a specific concept or skill. The next topic to be covered is instructional classroom guidelines. Now there are certain classroom guidelines and practices that any grade mathematics teacher can benefit from using. All classroom teachers should set high expectations for their students. By having confidence and belief in your students, your students are motivated to achieve success. Active participation is an important component of instruction. Effective teachers are able to engage their students and get them to join in the discussion. Research shows that students are more likely to participate and engage when the content is related to their personal lives and to real world situations. Teachers should try to relate their content to the real world if applicable. Concrete instruction occurs when students are able to learn mathematics through concrete objects, manipulatives, and hands-on learning experiences. It should set in place short-term and long-term goals for their students. Goals should be quote, smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Continuing, we move on to the next topic, which is problem solving for mathematics. Students should be taught the basic processes as well as the necessary critical thinking skills needed. For example, students may require their own personal toolkit to solve math problems, which basically means using flowcharts, drawing diagrams, checking for solutions, constructing models, etc., etc. There are also a number of specific problem solving strategies that work best for mathematics. To that point, working backwards in word problems can help find solutions. Next is application. Just because a student understands a concept doesn't mean they can apply that concept in real world situations. Cooperative learning and grouping strategies are also an excellent way to teach mathematic problem solving. Students get to practice their soft skills where they are able to learn and work with others. Right now I want to take a short break and ask that you please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and check the description for a link to the PowerPoint presentation. Moving forward, let's begin with pre-number skill and one-to-one -one correspondence, which is basically an understanding that each object in a group can be counted only one time. So if you hand out three pieces of paper, each student gets only one piece of paper. Each piece of paper corresponds to one student. Teaching with flashcards when showing the number three, have three objects on the card. Next is classification, which is essentially the ability for students to sort objects and ideas. For example, think variables for different objects. X can represent the number of hats, Y can represent the number of shirts, Z can represent the number of socks. With respect to clothes, students should be able to classify the socks and put them in a quote sock basket. Next is seriation. That is the ability to rank objects by degree. 
For example, students can rank objects based on their length. Now let's get back to it. And next we'll take a look at numeration, which relates to the process of counting. Students should be skilled at estimating numbers. For example, what is the price of a cheeseburger or a gallon of milk? Teachers can ask students to estimate how many other students are currently in the classroom. Understanding the value and properties of number zero is also very important. Students should know that zero means nothing. Like in this case, there is nothing in the box. The box is empty. They should also recognize how zero is used with respect to place value, something that comes up next. Take a look at these three examples. Notice the different meanings of zero. The next component of numeration is regrouping, which relates to borrowing numbers with addition and subtraction, amongst other things. For number 28, for, for the example of 28 plus 64, the student did not carry the one here. What we have here is a general misunderstanding of place values that leads to an incorrect answer. This all leads into the next topic, Students can be taught through groupings of ones, tens, hundreds, etc., and so forth. Take the number 312 for example. Students should know that the three is in the hundreds place, the one in the tens place, and two in the one spot. 312 can be named as three hundreds, one ten, and two ones. Another method for teaching place value is to use unit blocks, such as singles and tens. Let's say you have 16 units. Well, that can be right represented as a single unit and one unit of the 10 blocks piled up together into a set. And now on to the last component in basic skills, which is adding and subtracting with efficiency, computational skills. Computational skills include addition, subtraction, multiplication. Many simple arithmetic mistakes are a result of poor handwriting. Some students write very sloppy and they wind up misreading their own written work, which leads to the wrong answer. Visual detail is another component. Students simply misread the arithmetic. Three plus two is read as eight plus two. This happens when students rush their work. Other arithmetic mistakes happen with memory problems. Things like basic times tables must be memorized by students early on in mathematics classes. Next is calculators, which are obviously very useful with arithmetic. Still, the student must be actually taught how to use a calculator, such as its keys, functions, how it reads. The next domain of this presentation is teaching strategies. Manipulatives are physical objects that are brought into the classroom and used as teaching tools. Manipulatives are quite effective, in particular when teaching fractions. They are great for visual representation, and younger students love working with their hands. For fractions, there are fraction rods and pie charts. Playing cards are great for manipulatives. They can be used not just for probability, but for many other activities. Students do need to be taught about different suits, what an ace means, different suits like hearts and diamonds. Counters are manipulatives used in the younger grades. This helps children with numeration. In the example here, there is only one color being used. In fact, most have different colors. Lastly, playing dice teaching one-to-one -one correspondence through board games. Have students count the steps they actually take after rolling the dice for the board game. The next type of teaching strategy is the use of games. And for this video, overall mathematics games makes learning fun and motivates the learner. There are a number of different classroom mathematics games, such as Math Bingo, Jeopardy, Round Robin, Buzzer Beater, and many more that you might come up with yourself. Find one game that you like and incorporate it into your instruction. Gamification is a little different than Math Bingo. Gamification is the idea that creating a competition or reward system for students based on achievement leads to increased motivation. A game-based learning, on the other hand, relates to Math Jeopardy and things like that. Now, there are many math skill learning games that are electronic, where the students must actually solve math problems while playing the video games themselves. The third strategy is peer support and peer tutoring. Peer support, peer support brings students together to learn and practice math skills. Peer assisted learning strategies, often called PALS, has become very popular in higher education. PALS is essentially a peer tutoring program where the peer tutoring is highly structured. Peer tutors are trained to be mentors and leaders. There is also a social benefit. Socially awkward students may have a difficult time making friends. 
Reciprocal peer tutoring is a different form of tutoring. Here students are usually grouped with more than two students. Students monitor each other and work towards academic goals. Continuing with teaching strategies, we'll explore the CRA model of mathematics teaching. CRA stands for Concrete, Representational, and Abstract, and it is a three-phase model designed for mathematics intervention. Educators begin by teaching the math concept and model it with concrete objects. Students get to manipulate those objects with their hands. The next phase is representational, where the teacher transforms the concrete object into a semi-concrete representation. This level may involve creating drawings, filling in circles, adding marks to a piece of paper, the last phase is the abstract stage. The last phase is abstract, which is the most difficult for students to comprehend. This is where students must add and multiply numbers on a piece of paper, such as 14 plus 7, or 10 times 2. Now on to the last of our mathematics teaching strategies, which is the use of repetition. Repetition provides the needed practice to master a skill. Like anything in life, practice makes perfect. Practice is needed for developing math fluency, Math fluency is the ability to recall facts and answers automatically without having to think about it. When using repetition to teach mathematics, educators are advised to chunk information for their students. Chunking is an active learning strategy. Information is grouped into small and meaningful chunks, making it easier to recall. Lastly, spaced repetition, something I continually preach on this channel. Students are more likely to remember what they have learned when that information or skill is repeated in spaced intervals. Now, as we come to the end, we'll explore our last category, technology. And due to recent social distancing measures, math teachers have been forced to incorporate technology into their instruction. Both Zoom and Google Meet are great tools for incorporating live instruction as well as using questions and answers. YouTube videos are great for reinforcing a concept. As the math curriculum grows, one way to tackle that achievement gap is to flip the classroom through mathematics YouTube videos. Jamboard and Canva are interactive whiteboards. You can erase, bring in images, share the Jamboard with others. It has many features. Kami is an excellent tool that I learned from Ms. Downey. I mostly use it to annotate text. Teachers can fill in the worksheets for their students electronically. And lastly, GeoGebra, which is great for providing graphic calculators similar to Desmos, which is also useful. GeoGebra provides open space to create triangles and much, much more. Right now, I want to say thank you for your time. Subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share this video with other mathematics teachers and um, check the description for the PowerPoint presentation to, the, to this whole uh, video. Have a nice day.